Hello everyone, welcome to our documentary presentation pitch. Uh, my name is Arjun Parla, I'm the director, uh, I'm sorry, I'm the producer of the group. Uh, hello, my name is Katie and I am the cinematographer. Hi, I'm Rosie and I am the editor. Hello, I'm Rupe, I'm the counselor of the, the counselor of the lighting and the sound. And the director of the group is actually in fact all of us. We're going to play a part in the directing of this documentary, so we'll be able to give our own spin on certain aspects of the film. Um, we'd like to show you a little flavour of our documentary, so without further ado. Brits don't quit. They are hopelessly underestimating this country. There is not a single, serious, credible, independent organisation that thinks we'd be better off out. But why would we join such a club today? People whose job it is to warn Prime Ministers have said it would shrink our economy. Would anybody in their right mind join the EU as an incident? I don't think so. If we vote out, that's it. We're the biggest financial capital in the world. That has nothing to do with the EU. And the next generation will have to live with the consequences far longer than the rest of us. On the 23rd of June, 2016, Britain voted to leave the European Union. Over 30 million votes were cast, so you can see the importance of the decision made. Since that decision was made, there's been a lot of uncertainty on how this will affect the country and how it will affect students and also trade, but university life is still unsure. Um, obviously, since we are actually university students, and in particular Brooks students, we're concerned over the effect it will have on our daily life and actually the future of Brooks. Um, for kind of the new students, the staff, and actually parents also and guardians that are potentially paying or sending their students here. Um, so therefore we're actually going to focus on the effect that uh, Brexit has had on the um, university and how will it affect um, the next generation and the future to come. We feel that the actual opinion on, the, on Brexit is not that important to this project because the decision to leave has already been made and that's not going to change. We would like to reflect on the decision and reassure present and future students and staff that Brooks will continue to thrive as a university. Although we are working in a reflective style, we will take inspiration from poetic and expository modes as we want to, it to look nice but connect with it, an audience on an emotional level. In order to connect emotionally, we will be using a backing track. This will start off strongly and engage the audience immediately and soon peel off into a soft track which whilst the hearing the effects of the Brexit and we're also conducting an interview of the Chancellor of the books after speaking to many of students <coughs> about their worries we will show the students asking questions in picture in picture format Following off the new faith, the characters will be the community of Brooks University, and also that means the target audience will be the characters and sorry, the community of Brooks University, including the staff and the students. The worries are shared across the board. Uh, the students and the staff are all worried about what could happen in the future and how it will affect them. The separate interview with the Chancellor is there to reassure and help the students um, with any questions they've had and also the students everywhere in the country will be able to look at this documentary as a reference to how universities, how universities especially Brooks, are acting towards uh, working with Brexit rather than against it. And the way we're actually going to film this, we're going to be shooting on a Canon XF305 and we'll be using Avid Media Composer to edit this. Um, we will also be using a tripod um, in order to get steady shots as we don't want anything to distract from the facts and the seriousness 
of our, of our documentary. We'll be shooting both exterior and interior, which obviously means we're going to have to think about our lighting, both exterior and interiorly. Um, we'll also be making sure, and this is actually probably one of our most important parts, that everyone that's been seen in the film or being interviewed will be signing a consent form. We want everyone to be properly happy that they're a part of our project. Um, with the interview with the Chancellor, we uh, have actually researched a lot about the composition already, uh, and we'll definitely be using the rule of thirds, and most likely going to be putting him on the right vertical line in order to give him enough looking space. Um, and will you be using three-point lighting as will be in his office? And we want the lighting to look really good and have like the most control over the shadows. Um, as well as that, obviously the student interviews are going to be conducted at different places in Brooks, sort of more free interviews. And therefore, we're going to use natural lighting, um, and we'll make sure that we bring a reflector along with us and a bouncer to make sure that we have as much control of the shadows as we um, as we possibly can. For the project timescale. We've given ourselves up to a week worth of filming, so we're going to break that down for you. We're going to have one to two days worth of filming the interviews, one day filming filler shots and scenery shots, a half day recording sound, uh, like wild tracks and etc. and also half a day scouting for locations and places where we can film. That leaves us up to three weeks to edit, and also it leaves us time, if we need reshoots, we can reshoot, also if we go over on the editing front, then we can also edit it as well. We have looked into the problems that we may face into our filming, and we also have found the solutions to these problems. As we will move in our locations uh, with our students' interviews, we will face the problems of the sound recording based on the noise level and the lighting also will be the problem depending on the sound movement or the weather change. Um, we've looked into two types of recording equipment, um, both wireless and wired, and for our project we've actually decided to use a rod mic um, as it's directional and also for the community part of books we do want a bit of background noise and see what's actually a bit going on especially for our picture in picture composition this, this will work nicely we'll be recording um, some wild tracks as well to make the sound as professional as possible um, obviously our lighting could be an issue um, but we will shoot on the same day, use a light reflector and our main worry is making this into an advertisement for books so actually we're not going to be too much around books we're going to keep the, the subject of Brexit um, through more than anything. Our group is made up of students from different backgrounds and this gives us a unique insight to this subject. Also, being students ourselves will find it easier to approach other students in the university to make them feel less uh, pressured into to answer questions. We're all very passionate about this subject, um, being part of Brooks University and it is important to us how the future of Brooks will continue. And um, we hope that in years to come, Brooks will be uh, thriving uh, throughout. <laughs> Thanks for listening. And any questions? Okay. Thanks very much. It's nicely presented. Involved all of you. You've obviously worked as a team, which is really nice to see. Don't ever, ever let me hear you using a word like filler shots again. You never do that. Every shot is there because it's a good shot, you know what I mean? Don't, we don't use words like filler or wallpaper or anything like that. Biggest worry, do you mind if I'm more direct than I'd normally be with you because I think you're up to it. Your biggest danger is it being boring because yeah. what you've said here is there'll be an interview with the um, Chancellor and there'll be some interviews with students all wailing what a terrible thing this is. And I'm thinking, tell me something I don't know. You know, what's the, is there a specific, is there a metaphor you've got here? Is there some precise small focus you can, go, you can get which tells us a lot? Is, there, is Brooks a kind of a globe that we look at how it affects the canteen in terms of rising <coughs> prices for food stuff? how it affects revenues in terms of fall off of foreign students, grant aid. Just, I'm looking for a more precise focus and a load of people saying, oh, it's a terrible idea, we're really upset about it. That's my biggest single worry. Um, 
I think the technical side, I'm not worried about. I'm convinced you'll be able to film and cut stuff. You've allowed bags of time for anything. It's just, will it be a bit boring? It's a, a substantive talking head plus a load of box pops plus some buildings. What's the clever idea? What's the conceit in it? Yeah. Can I add to that quickly? Yeah. Um, we um, obviously have had like a look into that because we did think that as well. Like, how yeah. we need to focus down on one thing. So we actually are thinking about more the European student side of it, um, because obviously that's that's kind of the main concern for us. It's not as a concern, but whether they're going to get the funding and, and whether they're actually going to be able to come here and study and stuff, that's sort of the main part. I understand completely with you on that it could be boring, but I think the way we're actually going to film it and focus it will make sure that it's not boring. Yeah, I was going to say the exact same thing. Like, we're also going to try not to get too many opinions on Brexit itself. Um, yeah, that's the, the, the decision has been made. We, we can't change it right now. Um, yeah. And we've, hopefully the, the documentary will... We don't want people going, idea. oh, we don't like Brexit, or we don't yeah. like this. It's not about that. It's happened. Yeah. We can't go back on that. You just do me a so, do, a, do a, a high chart breakdown of what Brooks's income and expenditure is and just think laterally about yeah. every single way this is going to affect it. Yeah. Because your added value is the stuff that we're not expecting to hear, the queer <coughs> things that you really weren't expecting. I mean, we know that foreign students, EU foreign students, will tail off. Um, do, does that mean we'll get more students from outside the EU? I don't know, and I'll be interested in that. So just think beyond the obvious things, yeah? And yeah. find the strange little details that we haven't thought of. Tell me something I don't know. Okay, um, thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Very organised pitch, very nicely presented. A couple of voices could be a bit louder, um, just um, and just for people at the back of the room. Um, my question, a little bit similar. Um, you said something like you have different backgrounds, and that means you have a, a unique insight into that. I'd like to know a little bit more about that. So we, so we've got obviously a European student here for us. So we've got um, more like an insight into that and how, how actually Unify feels about it. And she'll be having more, not feels about it, sorry, she'll have more of an insight into how it will affect it. Um, chatting to friends back home who might want to be coming here. Um, are you European? Yeah. yeah, and I also think because I am the international student international. and I think we will find something about the local student and international student and also about the EU student because I found something about the Brexit online that EU students will pay the more highest school um, tuitions more than the international student. Um, obviously, because me and Rosie, uh, second year students, will be also will anticipate maybe potentially going to placement year abroad. Yeah. It's going to affect that quite quite heavily. Yeah, that's what we're discussing as well. Actually, yeah. um, can I ask one thing? You said at one point, so we want to reassure. Is it your job to reassure? Shouldn't you, in journalism and documentary, be trying to stir up, if anything, to alarm if there's cause for alarm? It's not really your job to, to be reassuring, is it? I think it's a bit, it's, it's a bit of both, because we're, we're going to be listening to lots of students, and one particular student as well, as well as lots of students, about their concerns and worries, so it will build it up a bit, um, to like kind of show all those worries, and oh gosh, that's going to happen, that could happen, this could happen, and then the Chancellor can, I mean, he may not reassure us, um, you know, the aim would be, it'd be nice to give people that insight and maybe have a bit of a reassurance that Brooks will be fine. Um, but obviously he might say, actually that will happen, and that could build a bit of a stir up. Um, so I think reassure is probably the wrong word to use there. But. Okay, so when you're talking about the Chancellor, yes. you're not talking about Catherine Granger, who's the Chancellor. We're talking yes. about the Vice Chancellor, Alistair Fitz. Yes. Yeah, okay, so remember to call him by Vice his correct name. So the Chancellor of a university doesn't really have too much to do with day-to-day -day running. No. They're more a nominal figure, celebrity type, facing outwards person. Alistair Fitt, yes, he's the one yeah, really. Yeah, he's actually talking about us over the summer about yeah. Brexit as well. Yeah. Work. So we've looked at that quite a lot. So. Great, that's really good. It's really great you've done that research. 
Um, yeah, and do probe him. Yes, that's really good yeah, to exactly. ask him to, and that would be really good to hear what he has to say. I've heard him say things at meetings, but it'd be really nice to hear um, how, and, and it'd be great if he agrees, if he's agreed to be interviewed. Really good forward thinking about this. Um, yep, so just as I think, um, to, to, to confirm that we need a story, yep. and um, um, there's an exercise we might have time to do next week. To, to I want to see where mm. the arc is going in this story. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. Can Natty? One, one small point of detail: the cards are really nicely laid out, so and it's, it's good to see them. It's such a well planned talk. It, it's uh, effect, not affect. I put effect first. <laughs> Oops. Sorry. Yeah, just get the because if you get all the spelling spot on, it doesn't. It, it, if you get them wrong, it can undermine your credibility. Yeah. So always I did put double check first, that. and then I changed it thinking that I was wrong. Okay. And also, one of the problems of, like you guys just said, the, with the character, whilst I was um, just preparing for the pitch yesterday night, the, uh, that, that was one of the things that I thought I didn't want it to become an advert for Brooks. I wanted it to be a, a documentary about Brexit and how it affects the students. So we, we have taken that on board. It's just a bit too late to change that minor detail before the pitch. Can I have a suggestion and proposal and you think about it and you let me know. On the documentary club in week eight, we have the great European disaster movie. And we have a Q&A with director Annalisa Piras and executive producer Bill Emmont. If you want to help me to film the Q&A, you can use the cameras to film the audience and the Q&A and the conversation, and you can ask the director or the person who is hosting to ask questions about Brexit and see if you can use the footage for your, because it's going to be really interesting. Yeah. We have an average of 70 to 150 people average. Uh, okay. So you might get very nice footage there. Okay. You help me, I help you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much.